Hello, we are with you again in our program series, Facts About Our Country. The guest of our 10th program series is Mr. Herbert Dorfmann, joining us from the European Parliament in Brussels. Born in 1969, Mr. Dorfmann belongs to the German minority in the autonomous region of South Tyrol in Northern Italy. Mr. Dorfmann began his professional career as a lecturer at the University of Agriculture in Auer Ora, then became director of the Department of Agriculture at the Bosen Bolzano Chamber of Commerce. Dorfmann, who started his career in the agricultural field in South Tyrol, served as director of the South Tyrolean Farmers Federation for more than 10 years. He was elected mayor of Feldtuns in 2005 and served there as mayor until 2009. Dorfmann, who held a one-term presidency of the South Tyrolean People's Party, was elected as a member of European Parliament in the 2009 EP elections. He was elected MP for the second and third time in 2014 and 2019, and is currently the group coordinator for the European People's Party in the Committee on Agriculture and Rural Development, also known as AGRI. Today, we will discuss with Mr. Dorfmann the protection of the national minorities in Europe, as well as the steps to be taken for agricultural and rural development at the regional level where they live, and also the possible impacts of regional development on the minority rights. Uh, so Mr. Dorfmann, first of all, thank you for accepting our, our invitation and welcome to our program. Thank you Whitney, for the invitation. It's really a pleasure for me being with you this uh, today. Thanks. Thanks. The pleasure is very much uh, common. Uh, so first of all, you know, I would like to ask you what we had asked uh, our previous guest, which was Mr. Vince back in July. Um, we know that one in seven European citizens belong to an autochthonous minority or speak, uh, you know, regional or minority language. Now, you as an MEP for three terms, you know, belonging to the German minority from South Tyrol, uh, how would you explain the situation of national minorities in Europe and knowing that the national minorities have different needs or face different issues? Well, actually, I think that you have a very different situation in different, uh, in different member states and uh, the enlargement um, of the European Union 15, more than 15 years ago brought into the European Union clearly many new minorities because especially mm -hmm. in the in the uh, eastern part of our union in the so-called middle europa uh, due to the history of these uh, regions you have uh, or these states you have uh, a lot of of, of minorities and <clears throat> the, i think the history of each minority is different uh, the background is different and first of all the protection is completely different in different member states I have I'm in a good situation to belong to maybe one of the most protected minorities in, in Europe. But I'm aware that there are a lot of uh, 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 not really protected minorities. And what I, um, I think for, is one of the biggest problems that a lot of regional languages and uh, are uh, close to extinctions and, and we are going to lose a very, very important cultural heritage of uh, this continent because each language is also part, I think, an essential part of the cultural heritage of the continent. Yes, exactly. And that's a <laughs> real cause for concern in many different parts of, uh, of Europe, as you said, for minorities. Now, as you, you, you rightly pointed out, you know, there are really good examples uh, with respect to the rights of national minorities and obviously, uh, South Tyrol, which is the region where you come from, is, is obviously one very good case study, we would say, in a way. Now, as an autonomous province, uh, you know, you are the majority as the German speaking uh, people in South Tyrol. But there are also, I think, uh, you know, smaller minorities such as the Ladins, uh, whose existence, you know, is at stake. Now, from your point of view, what are the measures for the protection of the different ethnic groups in your region? Well, actually, I think that a minority needs an active protection because if a state simply doesn't care, a minority will not survive. A state does not need to act against a minority. A state simply needs to do nothing. 
in order to uh, have a, a, a let's say a, 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 um, a, to to create a problem for minority actually okay. i don't think that latin is at stake at least in 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 my region um i think in my region in south tyrol and also in trentino the latin community is 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 uh, is uh, it lives in three different regions of uh, the Italian state in, in in south tyrol and trentino and in veneto mm -hmm. and uh, i think in at least in south tyrol and also in trentino latin today is more spoken than 20 years ago um, but we see the situation in Veneto, for example, where nothing is done for the, the, or the region that does nothing for the, the minority and uh, um, they are losing speakers. So, um, and this is, I think, a good example of a small minority, of a small community speaking a regional language, um, which you cannot compare with a uh, situation of, for example, the German speaking minority in South Tyrol, which is a majority in the region and which speaks a, a, a language which is one of the most spoken in the continent. So it's a completely different situation. Yeah. So as you said, you know, there are obviously languages which are more spoken than others, <laughs> some minorities which may face more um, different challenges. Now, as regards this, you know, what would you say about the status and rights of the national minorities living in your region? Uh, when I say this, it's with respect, you know, to the relationship of the autonomous province of South Tyrol uh, with the national government in Rome, in uh, in Italy. Well, the, um, my region has a very complicated history uh, in the last 100 years. Uh, immediately after after we became Italians in the, in uh, 1919, uh, Italian fascism came into uh, into force. This was a very complicated uh, moment for both minorities, the Latin minority and the German minority. Mm -hmm. And uh, but the protection uh, which we have today has a legal basis. The legal basis is the peace agreement after the Second World War, the Paris Agreement, and afterwards uh, an, an agreement between Italy, Austria, um, and a constitutional law at Italian level. So our protection is not depending on the goodwill of the Italian state or the goodwill of a government, because the protection of the Latin minority and the German minority in South Tyrol is a constitutional law in Italy. And this constitutional law you cannot simply change because it's a, it has an international, uh, in the, in, in international, or there's an international obligation of the Italian state coming directly from the agreement after the Second World War. So the protection is quite high, I would say. Mm -hmm. And indeed, uh, I mean, wherever there is a minority, there will ever be, uh, be the debates and discussions. Of, and also we are speaking about the so-called dynamic autonomy to increase our uh, autonomy in the region. Uh, but fundamentally, I would say we should not play or we should not uh, or we should accept that our minority, both the Latin and the German minority, are one of the most protected in Europe. Yes. So exactly, as you say, you know, obviously South Tyrol um, has a very good constructive relation, I suppose, with the, the central government in Italy. And there is a, uh, the will, you know, to protect the, the, the cultures of the, the minorities in the region. Now, contrary to the case of uh, your province and also, uh, for example, Schleswig-Holstein, you know, uh, which forms the German-Danish border region, uh, there are unfortunately countries in Europe which currently deny uh, the existence of the minorities on their territory. And uh, one of these examples is, uh, is Greece. Now, as an MEP who has already visited Greece, Western Thrace, you know, where our community, the Turkish community in Western Thrace lives, and also someone you know, who has been serving in the parliament for the three consecutive terms, uh, how would you evaluate the situation in Greece in terms of the recognition of the national minorities and uh, how their rights are guaranteed? Well, as you mentioned, I went to Western Trace um, some years ago 
I think Western trace you cannot compare with our situation or can so only partly compare with our uh, situation because you have, if you want to say it like this, a double minority, you have a language minority and you have you are a religious minority in Greece. So uh, this is another factor of, of, let's say, of cultural minority. Um, for sure, uh, the situation is not the best one, at least when I was there, I, I saw uh, different problems. Uh, I, I think, personally, I think one of the most important things for minority is political participation. Uh, the Italian state always guaranteed political participation to the German minority. We, we were part of the first uh, parliament uh, in first Italian parliament after the, the Second World War and always uh, the political participation at the national, also at the European level, because we have the fact time here in the European parliament is also due to, to a law that uh, allows the, the Italian minorities to express, uh, or the minorities in Italy to express a uh, member in the European Parliament. And this is not the case in Western Trace. And I think this is really a, a yes. big problem. Uh, I, I, when I was there, um, and it was with the former government, um, they, I, I didn't feel any connection, let's say, uh, with what's going on in Athens. And, and, and this is for sure a big problem for for minority yes exactly and you know as you rightly say political participation uh at least to enhance awareness uh, on the minorities uh, is critical really now given your experience as a politician belonging to a national minority uh in the ep in brussels what would be your your advice you not know, to greece at the national level with respect to protection of the rights of national national minorities and also in a broader European Union context where, you know, the issue of minorities has been left basically to the sovereignty of the member states. Uh, what do you think the parliament should do uh, to protect the rights of uh, the national minorities and uh, for, for them when they struggle for their rights and their freedoms? Well, actually, I think we have uh, different problems at the, at the at at process level and uh, we need to admit that uh, the protection of the European protection of, of the minorities is not very high so the European Union could engage much more in protecting minorities and I personally think this the fact that the Commission does not do this also in protecting for example regional languages is also due to the fact that uh, very often they do not distinguish between a minority and the sovereignty or the integrity of a state. They always think that uh, yes. protecting minorities means uh, create uh, problems to, to the integrity of the state. And from this point of view, I need to say what happened in Colonia, Catalonia for sure was not, was not helpful because this underlined in, the, in some eyes here in Brussels that uh, protecting minorities could also mean that the integrity of a state is, is at stake. But this is at least in our example, and I think also in the Greece example, not, not the case. Um, I personally think um, very often the, the states consider the minorities like a problem. And they do not understand, understand that uh, minorities are also an opportunity. I think, for example, for in our case, uh, having a bridge between the Italian Roman world and the German world uh, with, a, with a region in the state which speaks German, which speaks both languages, is a big opportunity for the state. And I think this could be also in Western trace. Exactly. Um, because uh, to have a bridge between, let's say, the Turkish culture, Turkish language, um, the, the religion, and the Greece of Greek yes. or could be also a, an opportunity. But I'm also well aware that the relationship uh, within or between two states of the European Union, like it is between Austria and Italy, is completely different compared to 
um, to Greece and, and Turkey, which, by the way, have also other problems, international or problems uh, in other parts of, of the territory. So I am well aware that, uh, that one of the problems in Western Greece is also that, that uh, let's say, the relationship between Greece and Turkey is not as good as it is, for example, between mm -hmm. Italy and, and, and Austria. Yeah, it's true that it can be a bit more uh, complex. It's a complex situation, obviously. Uh, Mr. Dorfman, what is the importance uh, of you know the regional development with respect to the national mi mi minorities? Like considering the tax you have realized, you know, in South Tyrol before you were elected as MEP. When I say regional development, you know, it's with respect, for example, to the work you achieved uh, on agricultural issues in EP and especially in the Agri Committee. Yeah, also here, um, I personally think that uh, the situation of the minority in my region is helpful also for regional for regional uh, development. For example, my region lives very much from tourism, and we are attractive for German tourists, for Austrian tourists, and for mm -hmm. Italian tourists, because uh, for the, the Italians, they can go for holidays in a region which for them is somehow different, but it's still part of Italy. And the Germans, they can go to a region which is Italian, but you can still speak German. So this, this function of a bridge between two worlds is, is important, is important uh, also if it comes to regional development. But I'm also aware that in a lot of situations uh, in, in different member states uh, of minorities in member states, unfortunately, very often uh, uh, minorities um, need to live in relatively poor regions. So where, um, uh, uh, where regional development lags behind. And this is a, for sure a big problem because this very often means also that especially younger people leave the region because they go to the big cities. Uh, and uh, once they go to the big cities, they lose their, their identity, they lose their culture. Very often they lose also their language. So um, I, I think... To maintain a region and to maintain, uh, let's say, a region uh, um, vibrant and active, yeah. you need a regional development and you need economy in the, in the region. Exactly. And, uh, as, as you said, you know, when we look at the map of Europe, we see that many of the national minorities, as you rightly pointed out, uh, live mostly in rural areas or underdeveloped areas or poorer areas economically speaking so what role do you think uh, should the minorities play in terms of you know agriculture and rural development how can we create maybe opportunities or incentives for them you know to to be part of uh, of uh, the agricultural sector for example but it's always the question what what is first the, is the region poor because it's the minority <laughs> there or there are the minorities there because the region is poor and also there you have completely different uh, situations sometimes it's even more complicated uh, maintain a, a, a minority um, if the development is uh, too strong i see it for example in the situation of the our latin minority these are the most developed uh, or the valleys where they live are the most developed uh, of our region because they are uh, famous all over the world for tourism. So it's the Dolomites. And clearly the inflowing money there and uh, is also somehow a danger for, for the culture uh, on, on the ground. So it's also here you have very different situations, but as I said before, you need a certain level of 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 uh, well staying of, of uh, regional development to maintain or people in the region to keep them there to avoid that they especially young people go because I see a lot of situations especially of minorities where uh, regional languages are spoken, that these regional languages are more and more spoken only by, by old people because the young people left. And uh, when they come back, very often after years or decades, they are already used to speak another language. They do not speak the original language anymore. And so you lose this language. 
um, what can you do? I think you need, a, I always say, a minority needs a positive discrimination. Uh, you need to give them some something more than the others have, because otherwise you lose the territory, and with the territory you lose the, the people and the minority, and the culture of a minority is not connected with the territory, but is connected with the people, with the language the people speak, the culture they have, the religion they have, and so on and so forth. Yes, indeed, and uh, that's why it's important to keep the, the languages and the cultures very much alive, I would say. Uh, what do you think is, you know, the, the relationship between uh, econo economic development and the organized struggle of the minorities for a solution of their existing issues? Now, what I mean by this is, in other words, uh, when there is no economic prosperity, uh, can a minority community find the strength uh, to struggle against the issues uh, of exercising collective, you know, social, cultural and political rights? Well, actually, maybe yes. If I see if I see what's ha what happened in my region, the strongest battle was in moments uh, when uh, the region was poor. Uh, the, um, the, it was not in, in the moment when the region was rich, because today we are one of the richest regions in Europe. But uh, in the in the in difficult times, like in the Italian fascism, but also after the Second World War, for example, my region after the Second World War was one of the poorest in Italy. Now is by far the most rich, uh, the richest region in 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 uh, in, in the Italian state. So I do not think that coming from a situation from a difficult situation, you cannot fight for the rights. And very often we had a very, um, a very important leader, um, a very important leader who is we, today we consider responsible for the, for the fight, let's say, uh, for the minority. It's Silvius Maniago, a historical politician who was president for the region for more than 30 years. And in a very prominent interview, he said, uh, when he was asked, do you, he was already old at that time, um, a journalist asked him, uh, President, uh, uh, what do you fear? Do you fear for the rights of your minority, of the Germans and the Latins here? And he, his answer said, no, I do not fear for the rights. What I'm concerned about is that this region now is getting very rich and the people need to live, to survive as a minority, also once they are a rich region. And maybe he was somehow right. So mm -hmm. um, uh, we should not always think that a minority needs, or it's it's so much connected with being poor and rich. Uh, but I think also that our situation is a good example how you can develop from a very poor region, fighting for your rights and becoming a very prosperous, vibrant region, which as I said today is one of the richest in Europe. Yeah, exactly. And, uh... Well, unfortunately, in the case of Western Thrace, obviously, you know, we're not uh, as an uh, advantage of South Tyrol, because what I can say is that Western Thrace, which is part of uh, the region of Eastern Macedo Macedonia and Thrace in Greece, is uh, unfortunately the most backward region of the country and uh, one of the least developed regions in the EU as well. And uh, so at this point, there is a commission in the Greek par parliament, which was established, known as the Commission for the Development of Thrace. And, uh, you know, organizations who represent com our community, including ABTTF, we had conveyed our suggestions to the commission uh, on the minority issues. So we had cited as ABTTF to this commission, South Tyrol as a, as a good example uh, in our proposals, you know, for the development of our region. However, uh, the final report of the commission was considered null and void by the Turkish committee in phrase. And the reason for this is that there was you know, limited and vague statements on how to solve the issues of our region. So what do you think should be the most single important issue to be considered when making a, you know, a regional development plan in the regions where the minorities live? Well, first of all, thank you for citing uh, South Tyrol and I can also show well, you we are, we are always, we try to be helpful. So we have also or the so-called so European Academy in, in Bolzano, in Bozen, uh, which uh, works together with a lot of, 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 of communities all over 
all over the world, actually, not all, only all over Europe, because we feel also a bit this responsibility to, to, to cooperate and col collaborate with other minorities in the world and try to improve their, their situation. I, I personally think, well, uh, also in our case, uh, it took a long time and, and a lot of measures. The most important thing is that a minority needs a certain degree of, of autonomy. Uh, a minority needs to this uh, to come into a situa situation when where it can decide itself how to develop, um, because it cannot be decided in Rome or in Athens or wherever what is the best way for for South Tyrol or for Trace. Uh, the the government in Athens should accept that the people in Trace know how, somehow themselves how to, how to evolve the region. And then clearly you need to finance it. This is another question because uh, also this in our case is, is clear. You can have the best autonomy in this world. If you don't have money, uh, you cannot dis decide if you cannot finance it. So you need a combination between, between autonomy and, and, and financing of a region. Um, and, and but I think this is maybe the most important thing that you need to come into a situation where you have a certain degree of self uh, of the possibility to, to, to decide yourself what is the best for the region and, and uh, this is also the best base to maintain or to, to let's say to, to keep the community community alive Absolutely. And, you know, your suggestions and uh, the case of South Tyrol for us as a minority is, uh, is really uh, invaluable. And we very much, you know, uh, welcome new suggestions and proposals in this case. Uh, Mr. Dauphin, what would you like to say as a last word as we come at uh, the end of our program? Well, first of all, all the best. Uh, I, I have been in touch with your community since I'm here and it's always a pleasure to speak also about about race, I enjoyed going there and see the situation on the ground. And uh, I personally can assure you where I can be helpful. I try to be helpful, and uh, also as a region, we we try to be helpful whenever you consider that we can be helpful. So all the best. Thank you so much, uh, Mr. Dorfman, for being our guest today and for answering all of our questions in a sincere and open language. And thank you for all our viewers, you know, following us in our program. Uh, see you all in our next program again. Goodbye.